When the, we were all fishing on a pier and then you'd hear the, 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 the steamer coming in, the Balmoral, doing the Ilfracoom trips. And as it came in, we all, if you were on the end of the pier, you had to reel in your rods and then you'd wait then for the boat to come in, slowly edging its way in, and then it would touch, depending on the skipper, either a big bump, boof, and the pier would go up in the air, the concrete, not the whole pier, the concrete bit on the end, and then it would move and then they tie up and everybody would get off to go to the pub. It was a pleasure pier uh, to, build, to bring people in from the valleys and surrounding areas to the Mumbles area so they could see the castle and look at the Mumbles itself. It's always been a gateway to Mumbles and for a local area it's absolutely vital it remains and it's very important and it's done out of love. I have to say this has been rebuilt, you know, as a family we've done this purely out of love. It has been an absolute... Uh, it's been an extremely emotional ride to get this rebuilt and yeah I have to say I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. It's not quick enough, it's more expensive than I'd like but I'm very very proud of what we've achieved so far and I hope it will continue. It looks a lot more stable than it used to when we were young. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the pier when the tide was out you go down there and it was about an inch thick the leg was. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. My dad was on the, the lifeboat when we were kids and of course you know the, the lifeboat has got very long connections with, with the pier and um, sometimes on a Sunday morning he used to bring us down here and on the, the purpose of that was that he get us to clean the brassos. It was, it was the morning that they used to do most of the maintenance on the lifeboat um, and the cleaning so that's why we, that's why we were employed down here given a pot of brasso and a rag and told to clean up all the brasses. We absolutely loved it, mind. We thought we were incredibly important, doing a very important job. Well, Mumbles Pier, um, obviously a landmark. I think it's known in most corners of the world, certainly Europe, and of course the famous uh, Mumbles Mile. But whenever I, whenever I leave, leave Mumbles and I go away, I used to play in tournaments, whatever, I get over the fly uh, Britain Ferry Bridge and I can see it. And, I, and every time I think, oh, great, that's it, home now, safe now, you know, it's, it's, it's someone you grow up with. When I was a child, it was, I was up the park playing football, I was either out the boat fishing or I was in Mumbles Pier. Are we ready to play? Eyes down and here we go. So when I was 15, I went to work in the bingo hall and oh, I sat on my podium well, I did. Uh, I can hear the speakers raging out at me now. I had the microphone in my hand and there I was, two and one, 21, all the fours, 44. Then you do your house. And the actual building is where the fish and chip shop cafe is now. So if you can imagine it, I was like the queen on the podium calling out the numbers, looking up at the rock face uh, with the lights illuminating with the steps in front of me and the pier behind me. What else could a girl want in Mumbles? They used to charge us, I think, it was five pence to go on the pier, but if you were fishing, it was 12 pence per rod extra. So we used to put three rods in one case and only pay 12 pence for the three rods. And there was an aggressive Scottish man in the box. And he used to, sometimes he used to come on and check how many rods we had. And we didn't know his name, but we, we nicknamed him Scotch on the Rocks. But he didn't like us smuggling extra rods on in one case. But that was the, that was the trick. It's been a massive part of my life. Um, and I have to say, I'm very, very pleased with being involved in the best parts of people's weeks. They come here for their enjoyment. They come to eat chips. They've saved up their two peas to go in the penny slot arcade. It's all of these things which I get to be involved in. I'm very, very fortunate in the fact that I do, my job is enjoying the best part of people's weeks. It's lovely. Um, I was once told, to, if you do something you love, then you'll never work a day in your life. So I picked chips and arcade machines as a 14-year-old boy, and I have to say, it still feels like work, but, but enjoyable work nonetheless. Born in between a castle and a pier, you know, it's not a bad choice, but when you're young, first place you want to go, bright lights. So it was down the pier. Mum and Dad, when I was really young, can't remember my first ever time here, because I was probably months old. 
But then, you know, remember coming down here and there's the rides just out the back, just by the entrance of the pier. And that was just the beginning of it. All the way through uh, my youth then, it would be pop down the pier with parents and then as you got a bit older, pop down with your mates, a bit older again, work down there and just enjoy it in general. It was just a great place. One of my best memories, of course, of the pier is coming down to Cinderella's nightclub. I mean, it was a very, very popular spot in those days. You go in there and dance away for most of the night, get very, very hot, and then come out to spectacular views of the pier and the lighthouse. And you'd be able to cool down a little bit and have a natter with your friends. Nobody ever got a taxi then in those days. It was the walk home. And that's what was one of the pleasures about it. I mean, where, where else could you take in views like this? It's just got a special place in your heart, you know, and the, and the, you know, the inner sound, the outer sound, the lighthouse, it's where we grew up. This was our go-to beach. My mother used to bring me down to Pier Beach when I was a little baby. I've got pictures, um, you know, first port of call, just down the road from where, where I was born. You know, it's, it's, there's so many people I spoke to as well that live in parts of England and they said, oh, Mum's Pier, yeah, we, we took the kids there. We used to go there. And they, you know, once you've seen it, you'll, uh, you'll always remember it. It's an unusual structure. Around about the age of 18, of course, Cinderella's was open then and uh, wow, was it a pr pleasure to come down here and queue in the rain, queue, see what boys were going in. And of course, we didn't have mobiles in those days, so we all had to telephone each other to say, come on, let's meet down the pier. It's Friday night, so let's go to Cinderella's. It's, it's magical. It's just a beautiful, magical place to live. And uh, anyone who ever gets a chance to be or come here, should do any day. I've lived here and I'm 57 and a half and I've lived here since I was born. I took it for granted coming down here fishing. I thought it was the normal thing. I thought everybody had a pier. But no, not everybody has a pier. We're very lucky in Mumbles. We are allowed to open again and we're starting um, and people are coming down, people are still supporting us. Um, so I'm very, very pleased with that. It's very, very nice to see some of the old faces which you know I've grown up with. Uh, we've got a lot of regular customers who have been coming here 30 or 40 years. That's why I think now, in my latter days, I've got no desire at all to go to Las Vegas because I think I've spent my youth absorbing the real, real thing. Superb, Crompton's cakewalks, bet they haven't even got them out there. And who needs Celine Dion when you got my sister calling a bingo? <laughs> well, I think I've been really lucky. I mean, I've obviously seen a lot of changes since um, my earliest memories to now. Some changes I've enjoyed, other changes I haven't particularly, but you know, change happens, isn't it? All in all, I think it was a fantastic place to grow up. We had a lot of freedom. We had plenty of places that we could go to for entertainment. We could walk, we could swim, we could fish. And I, I, ca I can't think of a better place to have grown up in, to be honest. We're very, very lucky in the fact that a lot of people's first jobs are with us. So they actually get to, um, we, we get to see them introducing themselves to the workforce and going forward. I, I do consider myself very blessed in what I do. I had such a privileged time and life be living in Mumbles and by the pier. I now have brought my son up on the pier uh, where he comes now with his friends and I'm looking forward to the next generation being able to come down to this beautiful, beautiful pier. It's, it's a place in all the local boys' hearts, some way or another, they've had dealings with Mumbles Pier. I think because I lived up just, you know, a stone's throw, I go to sleep at night to the sound of a foghorn. Um, if you're out in the boat and the, and the mist comes down, you know, you know where the pier is. It's, um, it's a haven, you know, a safe haven for us all uh, that, that live locally and um, very fond of it, very fond memories.